it is time to pull the engine out. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. They didn't even move anything. It is the dyno time for the heads cam setup. Time to switch to E85 and let her eat. This is not legal for the street. That is awesome. I'm really happy with Betty White. Should we sell her? Let's discuss in the next video. Okay, so I lied. So last time that we were on the channel, we had this intake on the C7. Well, one of the limitations of this intake was that the tube size is basically the same size as a stock throttle body. And with the MSD, this coupler pushes up against it. I thought we were getting some, some problems from, from that. I was seeing some restriction and I wanna try something else. So we're gonna try the cheapest intake that we could find, which was this engine intake that is going to do some funny stuff. It, uh, it doesn't have as big of a filter. It's a smaller filter. You, I'm not sure if you can kind of see in there that it's kind of small compared to this overcompensation of the AFE, but I do believe that this, this tube, which it's actually the opposite way, there's some, something weird is going on here, but I do believe that this tube is gonna work with a 102 millimeter throttle body much better so we're going to absolutely give that a shot and see if we can pick up even more power. You know, we were just on the dyno with the AFE and the factory throttle body making a peak of 536 rear wheel horsepower, which is quite a gain from the 389 that we started with. We're gonna see if this and the, the throttle body can take us up to the 550 mark, because that's honestly where I really wanted to be. I was a little disappointed. And it's mostly my fault for buying a 91,000 mile C7. Darn. Andrew. Hey, what? Can I see that? Which part do you want to see? Hey. So the AFE, we were seeing a restriction up top. And we're going to see if the, the cheaper engine does not have a restriction. We're seeing a drop down to 95 kPa, which is pretty big, I, I'd say, on a a naturally aspirated engine with a you know a setup like this that definitely shows a restriction in the intake because it sure as heck is not the intake manifold so when we talk about kpa uh, we're talking about the pressure of the atmosphere right here it's 100 kpa that's also one bar when we see it drop below that at this you know altitude and stuff that means that we're kind of in vacuum depending on you know what the outside air is actually if the higher you get the less dense it is like in denver it's probably going to be you know 95 or 92 kpa on average whereas here we're 100 kpa so when we see it go down to 95 during a pull that is a restriction that we're sensing somewhere in the intake manifold that could be caused from a throttle body or anything in front of it basically the filter the intake tube the housing that it's in stuff like that so when I say 95 kPa, I mean it is sucking down almost about a pound of boost. A pound of boost, like the opposite direction, would be about 7 kPa. So, yeah, getting close to like a pound of boost restriction. And that's, that's something that we wanted to remedy. And by we, I mean me. Here, here, Johnny. Yeah. I'm like, he's so fragile. I was going to scare him, I decided not to, and he got scared anyway. Yesterday, Alex walked up behind him with the parts that he needed, and he's, oh my god! Hmm, I don't like that. This doesn't reach. Maybe this is why it's so cheap. <sighs> yeah, it's stupid. Is like there the anything angle that this comes about off. extending it? No. Where's the, it would have came with a hose or something. And this is weird. There's like a hole here, and it's just like, this there. It was pretty cheap. I think it's for like, you know the GM little thing that sticks up that tells you if your filter's good or bad? It's got the green in it and a spring. I think it's to put in there. This is just a cap for it, but it's not. Okay, okay. well that's as stupid as possible, but at least it's pre-filtered. Yeah. The angle that they put this at is also very nice. It looks like it can come up a little bit. Like if we loosen this a little bit. You want to push on the throttle button? Or... Oh man, it's, yeah. 
Maybe it's maybe it's the the coupler choice. What's the other coupler look like? Just out of curiosity. It's just straight step down. Hmm. Well, that's weird. Okay, so the InGen does not necessarily have the best fitment. Not to throw InGen under the bus, but it looks like you're gonna need a little something, something. We're just gonna cap off the one section that we shouldn't have to cap off, but the InGen either doesn't have good enough quality control or it's just made wrong. Uh, or we could put a catch can on this, but we didn't have a catch can on the AFE, so I want to do an apples to apples comparison. And this one's not exactly apples to apples anymore anyway, but it's <sighs> stupid. Welcome to the performance industry, everyone. So as far as I'm rating the uh, install level, like, you know, if you had to rate how hard it is to install something, uh, the InGen is definitely a 10 out of 10 because it doesn't fit. All right, now that we've got the engine intake kind of on, uh, we're gonna find out if it works and if we should modify the uh, the one line. It is this line right here uh, to be a permanent fit. If it makes more power, I think that's what we're gonna do. But all we would have to do is add a rubber hose. Like basically cut this right there. Oh yeah, the GoPro doesn't like stop but we cut up and extend it with a rubber hose cut right here. And then that should work. Cause right now it doesn't entirely reach. That's the only problem, most likely due to the MSD intake manifold being a little bit further forward and then the throttle body. But I really feel like it, the stacking tolerance is here. It should have been able to fit anyway. Now a cold pull for after I've dialed the air fuel ratio in, see if it can beat 536 rear wheel horsepower because that's what the AFE did. Just like the other one, let's run it again. I'm actually on a conference call right now, dovetailing. Uh, I'm gonna run it one more time, just like we did with the AFE, because we did a cold pull. We're gonna we're letting the oil warm up a smidge, and uh, I'm gonna do it again right now. So it didn't pick up the extra two horsepower like it did on the AFE, uh, but that's pretty good. Um, you know, I'm impressed because I guess we're gonna have to make this one work because it's it's uh, it, it's it's uh, it's performing. I mean, it's a, I think it's a more affordable intake. It's performing. I'm I'm uh, not exactly sure why. The cheaper intake is doing better. I'm, I'm sure, I know what's going on, and I'm gonna tell you about why one has probably done better than the other. So guys, we started with 389 rear wheel horsepower, and it sucked. It was slow as balls. I don't know if balls can actually be that slow, but you know, they were in this case. And through all of what we've done, we've seen a steady increase of power. Every single thing we added just brought that power up, 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 up. And finally, we end up with 541 rear wheel horsepower and I gotta look at you gotta look at this graph to believe it because I mean it's like huge you can see at the the low side of the graph we didn't really lose much of anything even with this ridiculous camshaft that honestly a slightly smaller camshaft would probably do better in terms of the uh, the broadness of the power band and what I would probably do if I wasn't trying to get your YouTube love but in the top oh my god look at that spread it's obscene absolutely obscene it's uh there's just so much power everywhere it's like a rocket ship it's like we added a pro charger to this thing for only twice the cost I think that's going to wrap up the series as we tested the engine intake versus the AFV intake uh, really the AFV intake is a wonderful piece 
the InGen. I don't think it's as wonderful, but it fits with the Nick Williams 103. And thus, we were able to make a good seven rear wheel horsepower more, bringing it to a total of 541 rear wheel horsepower. It was awesome. Well, that's awkward. Yeah, you know what? This isn't even my car. That's my car. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's sold now. So thanks for asking. Thanks for watching the series. Uh, we're moving on to the next one, which you're going to have to pay attention to the, to the next video because I think you're going to like the next series. I sold it to Mike, who is my uh, business partner here. He's, uh, he's handsome. Handsome. Super duper handsome. He's not getting out of his car now. <laughs> but, but Mike will be on the videos racing it, so we will have at least one or two more follow-up videos on Vetty White. Uh, because our intention is to take it to the track and flog the shit out of him. I think he's wearing yoga pants. What the hell's wrong with that? Okay, guys. Adios. <laughs>